You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. In today's video, we're going to try to give you as much information as we can on not just who the person Shane Bowen is, but what he does on a week-to-week -week basis as the defensive coordinator. We're going to go over his top three strengths and his top three weaknesses as he is going to be the DC for this upcoming year. But I want first everyone to just show Shane Bowen some love. I know there's a lot of controversy surrounding the New York Giants right now with Brian Dable and Joe Shane and everything but let's, let's root for Shane Bowen. Shane Bowen needs to be a good DC. This team needs a good DC. Hit that thumbs up icon if you're excited to see Shane Bowen go to work on Sundays this upcoming year. I do just want to set this out there. The Giants went through a thorough process, and it was made apparent by Diana Rossini yesterday that the Giants wanted to take their time with this search, even though Joe Shane put a self-imposed deadline and then went past that deadline. They did their due diligence. They hired at least on the record seven coordinators or candidates for this job. And Shane Bowen, the youngest of the bunch at 37 years old, he was the one to get the job. And a large part of the reason, sure, the Giants didn't get their first or second guy in Denard Wilson or Bobby Babich. But what I do like about the Shane Bowen hire is he has the most play calling experience of any of the candidates that we know. And I am a fan of that for a couple of reasons. Look, Brian Dable is an offensive guy, and he needs to fix that offense. That's going to be a major priority for him this season. He can hand the keys to Bowen, and he can let him go to work on the defensive side of the ball. A lot of people have asked me, Marshall, what type of defense does he run? And we're going to go over that in today's show, talk about the top coverages that he used in 2023. But he is a guy that runs out of the base defense of a 3-4. And I think that's a little bit, you know, overrated may not be the term, but kind of just overblown at this point. You operate so often out of your nickel and dime packages and your sub packages that you're really only in your base defense on obvious rundowns or goal line situations. Bowen, he loves to run the dime defense. Let's take a look, though, at somewhat of a difference and compare and contrast the different defenses, the Giants in 2023 and the Tennessee Titans in 2023. Very similar uh, uh, overall when it comes to being in the middle of the pack, but they do things differently. I mean, the thing that pops off the page to me is yards per rush allowed. The Tennessee Titans allowed just 3.8 yards per rush last year. That was seventh in the NFL compared to the New York Giants that were ranked second to last, averaging almost 4.8 yards per rush. And then blitz rate. Shane Bowen does not blitz all that much, especially compared to what Wink Martindale did last year. The Giants had the second Highest blitz rate uh, amongst the NFL with Wink. And Bowen in Tennessee was 24th. Pressure rate, both were tied at 28th. Sacks for the Giants, even though they had a much higher blitz rate, was lower than the sacks for the Titans, 34 compared to 45. So definitely some stark differences there between Mink, uh, Wink Martindale and, and Shane Bowen. I want to go over, though, some strengths and weaknesses because we can talk about what he does on the field, but look, it comes down to this. What are you good at and what do you got to improve at? And his calling card, and probably the main reason he got this job, was his ability to create a game plan and a defensive scheme to stop the run. Shane Bowen, his entire time with the Tennessee Titans, they were ranked as one of the best rush defenses in the NFL. They were number two in the NFL in yards per game in 2021. In 2022, they were first in the NFL in yards per game, and they took a little bit of a step back this year, giving up over 101 yards per game, ranking 13th. But he does it in a unique way, and I thought Dan Duggan of The Athletic, in my opinion, the best Giants beat reporter there is, said this, the Titans used a two-eye safety look at one of the highest rates in the league under Bowen, and he leaned on defensive back heavy sub packages. The Titans used their dime personnel, six defensive backs, on 24% of their snaps during Bowen's time as a DC, which was the second highest rate in the NFL. And you might say, well, Marshall, we, they were really good against the run, but they operated a lot out of dime and nickel packages. And that's what's really crazy. You talk about the Titans' defense EPA per play against the run. They were first in 2022, 13th in 2021, and 12th this year. So even though he likes to operate out of a defensive back Heavy package a lot of the time, he still knows how to stop the run. That means DBs, the Giants are going to be looking at in the draft and free agency, they're going to need to be able to stop the run and bring their, hat, their, uh, their helmet and their hard hat to work on Sundays. I also love this. He doesn't give up a lot of big play runs. 
10 plus yard runs allowed under Bowen in Tennessee. First in 2021, the least. Third in 2022, and then tied for seventh in 2023. On the other side of the pillow, though, where he's not so good, pass defense. The Tennessee Titans, over the past couple of years, have ranked as one of the bottom pass defenses in the National Football League. They were 30th in EP EPA per play in 2023, 28th in 2022, really good in 2021, but it got worse year by year by year. He's also known to run a defense that is susceptible to giving up big plays, and that is a problem in my opinion. Hopefully that's something you can correct and get better at because we know on offense, big explosive plays equals points, and it's the same thing on defense. No better than middle of the pack. 18th was actually the best uh, 18 excuse me, tw uh, passes over 20, uh, tw uh, 2022, 32nd, and then in 2027, uh, 2021, 27th most passes over 20 plus yards. Also, I think a key part of that where he's so good at stopping the run and allows a good passing game is that his yards per play is in the middle of the pack. And we'll come back to this because we're going to talk about where he lines up on third downs and stuff like that. But notice, yards per play allowed, uh, middle of the pack. But he tries a lot of different ways to stop passes. Uh, he used cover one 28% of the time this year. He loves to play that too high safety like Dan Duggan talked about, but he'll roll it to a cover one. He likes to stack the box. He comes from a New England Patriots type of mindset where he wants you to play left-handed. He's going to take away your strength, and he's going to make you play with your second best type of thing. And he's very multiple as well, which I like. 21% of the time they ran cover three, 16% of the time they ran cover four, and they ran cover two, 14% of the time. Cover four, though, the fifth most in the NFL last year. That's pretty interesting. Like stop right in that cover one and cover three. He also knows how to get off the field. And this goes with his red zone defense, which we'll talk about. Tennessee ranked second inside the 30 when it comes to touchdown efficiency and opponent third and short conversions. They got off the field on 50% of the time. That's why he's so good at his red zone defense. The Titans under Bowen were a team that was known to be able to get off the field and hold teams to three instead of seven. 37% of the time, red zone trips wound up in touchdowns for the, for the opposing team. That's number one in the NFL. They were 14th in 2022, and they were fourth in 2021. And we also showed you inside the 30-yard line, they're really good at getting off the field, as well as inside the 50-yard line. When the field shrinks, I feel like he's a, his, his ability to create a game plan that puts his players in position to succeed really shows, and that shows in the number. On the other side, just like good at stopping the run, bad at stopping the uh, pass. When it comes to good in the red zone, he allows a lot of long drives. And it's very similar to Patrick Graham in the sense that he's a bend but don't break type of defensive coordinator. We saw Patrick Graham do that with the New York Giants for a couple of years. But that also means that the other team is most likely going to win the time of possession. They're going to have longer drives. And in my opinion, that puts more pressure on your offense to be successful with limited amount of opportunities. A bend but don't break style is what Bowen preaches. Of the 177 total drives, the Titans allowed 61 of them to enter the red zone. The second worst percentage in the NFL. So he's got to get better from inside the 20s or from 20 to 20, but inside the 20, he's really good as a defensive coordinator. Make sure you are subscribed to New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. We put out free, informative, entertaining content every day, and we're on our way to 43,000 subscribers. We're about 250 away. It's a major milestone, and we're trying to get there as soon as possible. If you're looking for a one-stop shop on YouTube all off-season long, subscribe to the channel. Also, check out our proud sponsor, Game Time, the best ticketing app in the game and when you use the promo code giants chat you're going to get 20 dollars off your first purchase the best seats for the lowest price guaranteed prices drop as the events get closer and they always have these fun flash deals and awesome stuff like they're doing with the big game in vegas this sunday if you use promo code vegas 100 when you download the game time app by going to the app store you're gonna get a hundred dollars off if you buy a ticket for the big game this sunday vegas 100 is the promo code check out game time the best ticketing app there is another strength of shane bowen is his third down 
defense, his ability to get off the field. How many times did we see with Wink Martindale there was long third downs, third and 15, third and 16, the two screen plays at the beginning of the year, the Giants weren't able to get off the field on third down. He was able to do that. Look at his third down defense under Shane Bowen, 2021, 2022, 2023 in Tennessee. Overall EPA on third down, ninth. Success rate, second. EPA per drop back, passing attempt, 13th. And EPA per rush, first. They had the best third down defense stopping the run in the National Football League when it comes to an EPA basis over the last three years. Really good at getting off the field on third down, which is a little bit weird when you talk about what a weakness is for him which is sex. He doesn't generate a lot of pressure. He doesn't bring a lot of pressure. He's not like Wink Martindale in the sense with these exotic schemes and blitzes. He doesn't really operate like that. He likes to keep things in front of him and having help on the back end. Sacks under Bowen. Never better than 10th in his three years with the Tennessee Titans. And in 2022, it was 18th. And in 2023, it was 16th. And what's crazy about that is when you talk about sacks per blitz rate, Bowen is actually much better than a guy like Wink Martindale. The blitz percentage in 2023, 22%, 18% in 2022, 21% in 2021. He's not a guy that's going to be super aggressive on third downs where he's going to bring a lot of max, uh, uh, max blitzes in, age, in, in gauge eight and things like that. One thing that I did think that was interesting with Shane Bowen is this year, his blitz percentage, 22% of the time. Pressure rate, 18.8% of the time. But the Titans had the third fastest time to pressure in the NFL, and he had three players reach double-digit sacks in each of the last three years. He's known as a guy that really helped Harold Landry become a really good player in this league. I'm excited to see what he does with young guys like Kayvon Thibodeau as well as Aziz Ojolari. Also, Jeffrey Simmons was really good for the Tennessee Titans. I'm sure Dexter Lawrence is excited about Bowen coming to town. So we know he's good at stopping the run. He's got a really good red zone defense and scheme. Third down defense, he knows how to get off the football field. Got to be better when it comes to pass defense. So you talk about the Giants defense, they don't really have any premier DBs. I don't think they're going to bring back Xavier McKinney. I think Adoree Jackson is also gone. So you got a young group led by Deontay Banks, allows long drives, but kind of gets stops in the red zone, kind of yin and yang right there, and he's got to get more sacks in my opinion. That's the blood. That's the backbone of this organization. I want to see the Giants get back to being a relentless pass rush. Yesterday, vid Yesterday's video, we re reacted to the news live and I literally got the news that the Giants hired Shane Bowen as I was in the middle of ripping Brian Dable. So I feel like my judgment was a little bit clouded. That's why I wanted to come back here on the channel today and just put all the information out there for you guys to digest. Overall, I like the hire. Was it my first choice? No. Was it my second choice? No. But I see the pros of this. I will see some cons, but I think the pros outweigh the cons in this situation. I want you now to grade the hire. We've all slept on it. We've all thought about it, we've all done research, and we've all analyzed the situation. Get out your red pen. Grade the hire of Shane Bowen as the Giants defensive coordinator. And remember, you can follow me over on social media, at Marshall Green on Twitter and Instagram. I'm posting every day about the Giants, so hit me up on there, and let's go Big Blue.